confetti club it is pixie and today i wanted to do a good old-fashioned vlog from home um i have been as most of you at home living my cozy little life working from home schooling from home and i decided to try to actually film what it's been like doing my schooling from distance because i know every school right now is kind of configuring something different depending on how hands-on your school is and how many people you have in a class and equipment there's just so many variables and I think it's fascinating kind of more than anything seeing like how we're adapting and how people are making it work so um without further ado let's get some vlogging on this is my work table and my little workspace I'm sure you guys see this around all the time in the background but yeah this is where I chill out for my Zoom classes. Not everyone uh, like sits in their sewing room for Zoom classes, but like it can sometimes it can be useful. My little board here is kind of a mess right now. It's like everything that I got in the Big Bud package and a storyboard for a video that uh, never ended up happening because of the world. <laughs> and this is what I'm going to be working on today mostly. Actually, I have a little bit of different work to do. So the classes I'm in this little teeny tiny baby semester are production and corset making. So those are both very exciting and different and we have the same awesome teacher for both of them. And this little baby semester is only five weeks long. The last week is like an assessment week where we just kind of have meetings and like get all our final projects in. So it's really, really condensed. Um, but it's a lot of fun and really exciting stuff to learn. Production is basically getting ready to like make bulk amounts of things, manufacture, you know, get yourself a little workshop going. We're in production, we're making crap, we're selling crap, we're making bills. So we've been learning about like how to price and how to make a bunch of stuff all in one run and how to do all your cutting first, then all your pinning and then all your sewing. And that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So I'm doing three hats and I decided here to do berets because I've always wanted to sew a beret. I'm a big beret gal. There's a sneaky peeky of two I have done here. I have to do a third one and then three more production style. That's what we're doing today. I have a little bit of corset homework too, but that's not as exciting to look at. Maybe I can show you guys too how I do my like tech pack tables because that's part of this semester as well is timing yourself. How long does it take you to cut, pin, sew, do one hat, do the second hat, do the third hat? Are you going speedier? Are you going slower? Cool, fun, lots of stuff to do. Off to class. So this semester is pretty simple. We only have two classes a week, actually. Um, today's class is production class, and the other class we have is corset, which is the one I had yesterday um, when I filmed this. So basically, I just get up, scrape myself together, and set up my iPad for our morning Zoom classes that we start at 9 a.m., which is like when class would normally start. So we keep it as kind of normal routine feeling as possible. Um, usually the Zoom calls don't go on as long as like a three or six hour lecture would, but it really just depends on what we're covering. Um, the class today that I did a little vloggy vlog of was more just kind of her explaining and like, you know, uh, lecturing about how we're going to be doing our work. So I wasn't actually pattern drafting while on Zoom or cutting things out or doing any like, you know, actual pattern drafting. But we do do that sometimes, just depending on the class and what's going on. I'm really, really fortunate that I have this sewing room set up and I have such a great space for me to do my work. Um, but they also usually post videos and photos to our Facebook group afterwards for anyone who didn't quite see what was going on in the Zoom call or people that uh, need to just have a little extra refresher afterwards. So I think the call today was about 45, maybe 55 minutes. And after that, I had a little lunch, took a little break, and then I just started working on the first of my hats. 
The assignment for this week is to do three more hats or masks. We got to basically pick something we're going to make multiples of. So in this vlog, after this little break, I'm gonna get started on my first hat. I took a nap and now my hair is in a bun, but my makeup is still mostly on. We're fine. Oh, I have a kitty cat. Oh, okay. So let me just chat about uh, my little bereavery pattern. So I basically Googled a uh, beret pattern and I looked at all of the different kind of examples people had done at home. My favorite style of beret is definitely the felted berets that just like, you know, conform to that shape, but I am not a felter and I decided not to take that class because it looks very physically taxing. And I decided to do some little sewn ones. So I measured around my noggin where I wanted it to lay and I made that the inner circle. Hello. Because I feel like I have so many berets. I have like a pancake stack of berets. So I really wanted to make sure this was like a, a good size for me. Oh my God. How do you do? I thought, you know what, this really is like, I'm with the geese from the Aristocats. And then yeah, it's really, it's really not that hard. I decided how like wide I wanted the brim to be around after I decided how like the spot I wanted it to lay on my head. And I was like, hmm, about that much. I think it's six centimeters. And then I was like, ooh, look, another kirkle. And then I was like, let's notch them together so that whenever I mark it all together, you know where to sew them. If you're not notching and notching while you sew, that's like the main thing I didn't do before fashion school that changed my life. Use notches. They're not a waste of time. Or maybe no one thinks notches are a waste of time and I was just like, a anarchist. <laughs> so the first one I made, um, I've been doing them out of these like fuzzy high pile fabrics because I just love a fuzzy beret and I think it kind of disguises the whole seam moment again because I like just the felted beret moment. This edge is like pretty awesome. This is, this is where I would have it rest upon the head and i definitely want to decorate the top with like you guessed it probably flowers and other things and like treat it like grass oh i could put a little picnic blanket i could make like the everyday version of my grad cap that would be fun and the inside for this one they're all fully lined is green gingham and i realized that they're actually kind of reversible but then i'm like is it weird to have like a cotton beret but like that's that's like reversed you know would that not be a hat i don't know it's like for the most part done by machine and then i do have to hand slip stitch like a little wee bit because it has to be turned inside out so i made this happy green one first i'm on a green kick and then i made this very happy pink fuzzy one <gasps> i love this i should make some more out of this fabric when i make my multiples today the inner fabric is these little daisy friends i've used this fabric on so 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 many projects and little samples and stuff for school because um it's so happy are you kidding me yeah like this this is what i want to see and i tried to pick the fur out of the seam it's difficult because the pile is like just high enough that it gets stuck but short enough that it's definitely difficult, borderline impossible to like pick it all out. But I have been going at it with tweezers and a little seam ripper like meh, 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 trying to rescue those furs from that seam there. And yeah, this one can also be flippy flipped inside out. Is this reversible? Am I a genius? <laughs> Did I do a thing? This was not really on purpose. I just wanted it to be lined, but then I was like, oh my God. And you can see the little furry lining, like just atop the head. I'll model these later in the video. I'll like put my hair down again for the second time today. I needed that nap though, guys. You'll definitely notice that I filmed the intro after my morning class where I have no makeup and no hair. Yay! <laughs> So this is a scrap. Um, this was briefly hanging to like cover my, ooh, non kawaii, non painted like wardrobe thing. Let us pray. Oh my God, cause this, could this ever be the lining? Yes. Oh, oh, today is a joyous day. 
oh my gosh I might even have enough for like all of them no I just realized that I need the top and bottom four times that's not gonna work I thought I only needed one four times I'm still waking up for my nap okay that's okay I think I'll use the same faux fur slinky stuff Woo! and maybe I'll just have varying linings so scratch that actually i messaged my friends because i realized that this material this faux fur that i'm cutting out right now was definitely the most nightmarish to work with the fibers are just so slippery they're definitely some poly plastic synthetic fiber crap so i think this might be the only beret i make of this and i also messaged my friends and asked them if they wanted any hatsies because i'm making them for homework anyway so um yes i decided to not use the same fabric for all of them but this beret is super duper fun so i'm using the same pastel rainbow faux fur that i used for the skirt i made for my six percent little project a year ago and i'm also lining it with this super happy pastel rainbow striped cotton pinning is one of the most important things for these berets because she's a big kirkle um it's not you know it's only two seams it's not too difficult of a project but you do got to be really careful and make sure that you pin it right because i think one of the hats out of the many i've done i did have a little bit of a pucker when i reached the end but you know it's fine we're learning and here specifically, I tried to practice not stopping very much while I was sewing and kind of just taking out my pins as I sew. You can see here, I did stop a couple of times, but it's good to get that practice in. And oh uh, yeah, doing the sewing without stopping on the faux fur was uh, more of a dream and less of a reality, but you know, I did my best. I also graded all the seams here and I cut little snips so that uh, the inner hole for the head can stretch and open up along that seam allowance to allow us to pin it in to the inside hole right sides together on my faux fur. This is also some icky tricky pinning, um, but it's not too bad. Again, with practice, this was I think my third hat. It's actually pretty relaxing. I kind of lay it on, fold it over like a pancake, like I'm making a little little crepe sandwich, and yeah, just match up my notches and pinny pin pin pin. And then it looks like a very strange flower situation. This is definitely the trickiest part to sew on the machine. Uh, I would take off any extra table little arm thing you have and just use the little like sleeve board attachment if you have one on your sewing machine to get around that tricky little inside hole. With this faux fur, while I did mention it was the most annoying to work with, it was the only one where I was able to really successfully pick out the pile from those seams. So here, you get a, a cheeky little video of that. This is actually a loop turner. I'm just using the, uh, the pokey end of this loop turner tool. And then definitely the most satisfying part about making these fully lined berets is turning it all the way inside out at the end. And, and yeah, that is the schoolwork that I completed today. Hat achieved. Welcome to my computing desk space. I wanted to show you guys a little peeky peek. We're gonna open quick time here and have a dual screen moment. I wanted to give you guys a quick little peek at how I do my designer sheet. Uh, designer sheet or presentation sheet, I believe they call it at my school, but it's basically the front page of your tech pack that has like the brief of all the information, the flat measurements, just, you know, it's like your cover page and i'm really really lucky that at my school and in my class with my teachers i feel like this is a teacher by teacher thing but i'm lucky that everyone not only allows me to use my own templates but they all really encourage it and they tell me that my notes are really cute and i anyway i'm really glad that my teachers appreciate my my colorful notes it brings me lots of joy because if i was forced to make it plain obviously i would do that but um I think it's cool that my teachers appreciate the extra branding even in just like the behind the scenes stuff. Not industry standard though, but I know how to do it industry standard. 
So here's the one that I did for my party shirt that I actually did a video for on this channel. Um, yeah, this is what the technical looks like. It's not perfect. Um, I think I did this at home with like Procreate and Photoshop, so I didn't have access to Adobe Illustrator, which is what we use in school, um, because this was like post-pandemic. <laughs> Um, so there's my party shirt one. You get the idea. Here is my daisy mini skirt thing with yoke. Um, and wow, that's a big ass spot for the swatches to go. Uh, this one I did before we had our fashion illustration class at all. So this was done by hand in pencil and then scanned in, which is why you can see the lines are all like achy breaky hard. The pants one is fun. This one, uh, my this was also before we actually had our illustration class, but I was kind of being like an eager beaver and I wanted to do it digitally anyway. So I only had one line weight and you can see it's kind of messed up some places. This isn't perfect, but again, this was before we had our illustration class. So we weren't actually marked on like the total nitty gritty perfection of it yet. Oh. And the other thing that I need to submit for these projects this semester is my timesheet for all of the berets. So um, I can put in my info for beret number three, which is what I filmed for you guys. I talked yesterday all about what I learned in class that morning. Just, I don't know, I got off of class and I was like, hello vlog, uh, we're in production and we're gonna learn how to do things in steps. But I am not gonna film and vlog sewing all of those berets because it gets repetitive so i feel like there's plenty of sewing footage in this vlog already y'all have probably seen a lot of time lapsing with some some calm anime background music but uh this is fun i actually asked my friends in our little cheeky group chat i was like i have to make six berets for homework like does anyone have any color preferences and do y'all want hats so now i feel like i have a little bit more of a purpose because i'm gonna be giving all of these berets to my friends yay fun baby's first rays <laughs> rays rays of sunshine r-e-t E apostrophe, never mind. Yeah, there's not, maybe not too much to say about the timesheet here. Um, I can open it up in Photoshop. Does anyone care about layers? Ooh, there's my little heady head head. My little noggy nog nog that was on Instagram today. Yeah, so you'll see I just have all of the same like graphic design with the rainbow. Excuse me? When you're in quarantine, so you gotta take a break to go rev your freaking engine down the cul-de-sac? Excuse me. This is a completely other different concept of a timesheet. These are the timesheets that I put in my tech packs for those individual garments. Whereas like the production timesheets are like, make a hat in an hour and then make a hat in 50 minutes and then try to make the hat in 40 minutes or 45 minutes. Um. But these timesheets were like, on this day I drafted for this many hours, and on the next day I cut for three hours, and then on the next day I pinned for two hours. So uh, they're both titled timesheets. Maybe I should probably distinguish that because they are different. You know, I didn't, I definitely wasn't as specific in the timesheet for the berets because it's like, you know, the whole thing only takes one hour. As opposed to 45 hour breakdown of freaking shirt. <laughs> yeah, the time difference actually isn't that crazy. I like it, it's, I remember saying in a past video, it's like this project felt like it took like a year and this one felt like it took like a month. But if you look at the actual hours that I logged of working on it, you just see that like time PLTV opening. That's old, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you see that uh, time's an illusion and it's all in your head and it was all kind of around the same amount of hours. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm consistent. Who knows? Okay, maybe maybe I couldn't find my template. So maybe I'm just going to um, take the pant one and write over the Photoshop file for my berets. Um, I have to do a technical of my hat for this, but it's just a beret. So I'm like, if it's laid flat, it, it doth that not just a circle? How do I find a way to make a picture of a beret laying flat that's not literally just a circle? 
I guess I'll show the other side of it and it'll be a circle with a smaller circle inside of it. I guess that's what I'll do. And she said we don't need swatches because we can't hand these in physically because we're doing all of this at distance. So swatches be gone. I am like not scientific. Oh, mama. I'm a little more scientific than that. Okay. Dude, like so peaceful. Like, I'm sorry I show so much of my cat, but like, she's like, literally, that is just behind me. Like, ugh, <laughs> ridiculous. By the way, this is the mouse pad in action. I believe I showed this in a previous favorites video. Ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah. I wish I had just a beatboxer on command behind me always. Me, break down. Okay, this is me procrastinating doing my homework. Are you kidding me? Okay, size, uh, one. I'm just gonna straight up copy this text because that makes it easy to use the same branding and stuff. This font is literally just Futura, but it is the bold. Um, I liked to use the Futura extra bold italicized font. That used to be what I used for all of my YouTube thumbnails ever, ever, ever. It was always like the boldest, thickest, most italic font I could find. Um, same font, she's just a little chiller now. I like that for me. <laughs> I'm gonna put swatches on it anyway because something is missing, mama. <laughs> it just doesn't like take up the space correctly. Maybe I'll, I will straight up put the swatches on and like scan it and take a picture. <laughs> or I'll put little, um. I'll put little squares of color. I'm not gonna lie, I'm working really, really slow and like brain spacey trying to do this and record and stuff at the same time. So I gave you guys a little rundown of how I do my presentation sheets and my tech pack tables and stuff. I'm gonna go finish this one up and I'm going to bring her home. I'm gonna bid you guys adieu. I hope this was a good video that you guys enjoyed please 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 let me know i've been feeling a little aimless with my channel i just feel like i don't really know what i'm meant to be doing like on a day-to-day -day life basis okay not to make completely light of my actual like existential dread but you know in animal crossing when you can go to tom nook and ask him what should i do i wish i had a real life like person or raccoon in my home that I could just go to every time I'm like, well, now what? I've finished this activity and now what? I've done this video and now what? And I feel like it's leaking into my YouTube and I'm just like, what is my purpose and what does my audience want to see and why am I here and what am I good at and, and what, the, uh, what do you want to see? Did you like this vlog, kids? <coughs> my cat is napping behind me. It's time to go. This video featuring Fanny Club member is Pickle Onion Chipu on Instagram, who has done just the cutest art ever of me from my last video, I believe. What is time? What are videos? When did I wear this outfit? Um, I love the very vibrant fruit salad in rainbow letters, and I love how you drew the background of my video. Oh my god, look at the little cute Cosmo! Ah! Oh. Okay, I'm zooming in on the little shelf in the background for the first time and I'm going to die. Yeah, this is just lovely. There's so many cute little details. Thank you so, so much for sharing this with me. It really made me smile. I love you guys so much, so, so, so much. And I'll see you in the next video, which is not this one, cause this one's over. Bye.